Hello everyone, we are going to start topic called Vertical Earthquake. So I will write here, topic name is Vertical Earthquake. So if you look at, Earthquake has two component. One is your horizontal component. And second is your vertical component. Vertical component. So when you are applying your dynamic analysis or when you are applying the dynamic forces, in that case you have to consider two components of earthquake. One is your horizontal component and second is your vertical component. But code says you that when you are applying the vertical component, no need to apply for every building. So code has given you some suggestion that in which type of building you have to apply the vertical earthquake. So if you look at the IS1893 close number 6.3.3 you will get an a criteria where you have to look at that in which type of building you have to apply the vertical earthquake. So let me open that code and show you that what actually different different condition are there when you have to apply the vertical earthquake. So let us come to that code. If you look at the code clause number 6.3.3 which I told you design vertical earthquake effect in this you will find out that effect due to the vertical earthquake shaking shall be considered when any of the following condition apply. So there are different condition here in which different different condition any of the condition it is there then you have to apply the vertical earthquake forces. Now let us look at that what all the condition are there to apply here. The first condition is that a structure is located in seismic zone 4 and 5. So when your structure is located in seismic zone 4 and 5, in that case only you have to apply the vertical earthquake. Second condition is that when your structure has a vertical and or a plan irregularities. So if your structure is having a vertical or if your structure is having a plan irregularities, in that case you have to apply the vertical earthquake effect. The third condition is that a structure is rested on soft soil. So if your structure is rested on soft soil, in that case you have to apply the vertical earthquake. If you look at next, that is a fourth condition in which the bridges, you have to apply the vertical earthquake. If you look at the fifth point here, when the structure has a long span. So when your structure is having very long span, in that case also you have to apply the vertical earthquake effect. If you look at the last here, it is written that a structure has a large horizontal overhang of a structural member or the subsystems. So if you have a large cantilever and all, in that cases also you have to apply the vertical earthquake effect. So there are different different conditions and any of the conditions if it is satisfied then as per IS1893 code you have, to, uh, you have to apply the vertical earthquake effect also in your model. Now when you will come in the clause number 6.4.6 .6, which is on the page number 14 So I was talking about this clause. Now when you will come in this clause, you will find that the design seismic escalation spectral value that is AV or vertical motion shall be taken as. So here you are getting AV value. Now you might be thinking that when we were applying that horizontal earthquake forces, we were getting AH value. And the AH value was SC by G multiplied by importance factor multiply by J zone factor and they were 2R. So on the basis of the time period this S A by G value was changing. But when you look at the AV value there is nothing such like that. The AV value is going to be constant. The AV value will depend upon only on the zone factor and what actually the R and I is there. So there is no any S A by G and all are required to apply in the AV. So SC by G and all it is required only when you are applying the horizontal earthquake forces. When it is come to a vertical earthquake forces in that case there is no any role of SA by G and all is there. So AV is going to be dependent on what actually the zone factor, what actually the response interaction factor and what actually importance factor are there. On the basis of that this AV value will be there. Also you will find some constant numeric value that is 2 by 3, 2 and 2.5. So this is how you will calculate the value of AV. 
If you're doing any building or any retaining liquid tank, in that case, this formula will get applied. If there is a bridges, in that case, this formula will get applied. But remember that when there is a bridges, then SA by G will also come here. And for industrial structures, then this formula will get applied. And in this formula also, you will get it SA by G. But when you're doing only the building and retaining wall, in that case, no need to give it any SA by G value for calculation of. But when you're doing building and liquid retaining tanks, in that case, you will not get any value called SA by G here. So you will find that in this formula, you will not find any SA by G values are there. But when you're doing any bridges or any industrial structures, in that case, there is a SA by G is also included here. Now you have understand that what actually AV and how the calculation will be there for AV values. Now when you will come in the page number 27, you will get a close of horizontal projection. So I am there in the page number 27. So when you will come in the page number 27 with the close number 7.12.2.2 here, as clause says you that, and this is the close of horizontal projection, this clause says you that all horizontal projection of the building like cantilever, a structural member at the porch level or higher or attached to the building like brackets, crosses and the balconies shall be designed five times the design co vertical coefficient AV. So what calculation you have done before of AV, that calculation has to be multiplied by five. So whenever you're doing any building with the horizontal project cantilever and all in that case cantilever will be designed as a five times of AV. Now question arises that why such type of horizontal projection should be designed that much of the factor here. So we are taking five as a factor to design to design a horizontal projection building or we can say cantilever here. So that we will look at right now. So I will open the ETAS model to explain this. I have taken a prototype model to explain you why the horizontal projection should design that much of the factor here. So if you look at the code as I told you that as per IS 1993-2016 with the close number 7.12.2.2 here your horizontal projection should be designed by the 5 times the design vertical coefficient AV. So why actually this is required? So when you look at here, I've just taken a prototype model to explain this and this is the horizontal projection I have here. So in my building, I have a, this much is the horizontal projection and also if you look at, I have given a floating column also. So if you look at here, this is our the floating column. Now I will undeform this first of all to show you clearly. So this is our floating column, this I'm talking about. And, and this is my horizontal projection. So you can look at this thing in the plan view also. So you have to go into plan and you can just open the plan view to see this. So you, you can look at here that we have given a horizontal projection also. Now to show the effect of the horizontal projection and cantilever during the earthquake, I am doing a time history analysis to show this. So I have defined a time history function here. So you can look at here, I have defined a vertical component of time history function. And also, I have defined a time history load cases also. So if you're going to define and the load cases, I have defined a vertical component of time history here. So again, I will run this. No, I will run the animation to show you the effect here. Now when we apply the time history dynamic analysis in our project and when we are looking the deformation here in the cantilever, you can just see that how my cantilever deformation is there and how badly you can just see that my cantilever projection are deforming. And also you can look at here that floating column also if you see here that how actually it is going to deform here during the earthquake. So that's the reason why if you look at the code says you that for designing such type of element, you have to consider five times AV.
Now, if you compare the structural deformation of horizontal projection with other structural members, like here you can look at, you will not find that that much of deformation is there. There is a deformation, but how this horizontal projection is deforming, that much of deformation you will not find it in the other structural member here. So, in case of the horizontal projection, the high level of deformation you will find it here. How actually we are seeing this part? You can look at here. And in case of floating column also, you can just see here when I am there in the floating column, you can just see that what level of deformation you are getting here in the floating column also. But if you look at the other structural member, you will not find that much of deformation. Deformation is there, but not that much of there. But in case of the floating columns, and if there is a horizontal projection, long structural beams like this, you can just see here, this is long structural beam. This is the level of deformation you can just see here, what we are getting here. So that's the reason why actually code says you that you have to design this much of the long span, floating columns, and horizontal projection with 5 AV. Now for better visibility, I will exclude this. And I will show the animation again. Now you can just see that how actually the horizontal projection behavior is there during the earthquake and also the long span if you look at it, this is the long span and you can just see here in the long span how your deformation is there and the floating column you can just see that how the deformation is there. So that's the reason for designing a horizontal projection. Horizontal projection like this, what I have just showing you, need to be applied a vertical earthquake. Also for the long beam, you can just see here, the deformation of the level in the long beam, we are getting lot of deformation. So here also we required a vertical component of earthquake here. And also to the floating columns and all. Like here you can just see the deformation here of how we are getting here in the column also. So this is the so much reason we can just say that we required a vertical component of earthquake for designing this, such type of a structural member. Also very important thing that when you are designing any horizontal projection in that case we required 5 AV. So as you are designing long beam and all like this then you no need to apply the 5 AV, AV. but when you are designing horizontal projection the cantilever and all you required a 5 AV as code says you. So if you look at the code again, okay, once again I will show this code. So if you just see here, the code says you that for all horizontal projection of the building like cantilever structural member at the porch level or higher should be designed 5 times the design vertical coefficient that is AV. So this is the reason why actually I told you that for such type of structure please 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 do the vertical analysis and also give it 5 AB for designing such type of structural element. Now we have came to end of this part. In this part we have studied that what is the importance of vertical component of earthquake. Also we have studied the caudal provision where we have seen that the calculation of AV. Also we have seen that how during the earthquake your horizontal component and your long span and floating column deformation is badly affected during the earthquake. So these are the things we have studied in this part. So in the next part we are going to learn that how we can apply the vertical earthquake in your project. So we will look at that, what are the scale factor you have to use it, how you have to calculate it, the function and all. So we are going to learn that how we can apply the vertical earthquake component in your building. Also we will look at that different load combination when we apply the earth vertical component of earthquake then what actually the load combination we have to use it for designing that structure.